The International Space Station's Expedition 29 is the first long-duration spaceflight for all three of its upcoming crew members. But for one of them, it's not even his first trip to the station. Dan Burbank is from central Connecticut, born in Manchester and raised in Tolland. He became interested in space and astronomy and science when the first men landed on the moon just one week before his eighth birthday. But a bigger impression was made a year later when he saw the movie The Boatniks. And it was a silly story about this fellow who graduates from the Coast Guard Academy and goes to a ship and, and has this whole series of misadventures. But from that point on, as long as I can remember, I wanted to be in the Coast Guard. I wanted to do search and rescue. He didn't get into the Coast Guard Academy on his first try. But after two years as a physics major at Fairfield University, he did, and learned almost immediately that Coast Guard officers don't do search and rescue on small boats, as he had dreamed of doing. But helicopter pilots did, and that became his new goal. Burbank graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Engineering and spent a year and a half assigned to a Coast Guard cutter before going to flight school and learning to fly planes and helicopters. After his first tour, he earned a master's in aeronautical science from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and completed the training to become an engineering officer and did that job while still flying on subsequent assignments. But he was inspired when fellow Coast Guard officer Bruce Melnick became an astronaut and Burbank applied three times before being selected as an astronaut in 1996. He was part of the 2000 shuttle mission that prepared the Zvezda module for the station's first permanent crew performed one spacewalk on the 2006 shuttle mission that delivered the P3-P4 truss, and then spent three years teaching at the Coast Guard Academy before retiring as a captain and beginning training for his first long-duration spaceflight, which he likens to the work that drew him to the Coast Guard as a boy. You're not going doing a mission with the idea that you're going to save a life. You're going to do a mission with the idea that you're going to save the future of a species and that this is where humans belong. I think humans, by their very nature, you know, are outward looking and I think it's in our destiny to, to, uh, to leave this planet ultimately and to go other places. Russian Air Force Colonel Anton Shkaplerov was born and raised in Sevastopol, the home of the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet. Though his father worked on a submarine, Shkaplerov became fascinated with spaceflight as a boy and felt that the Air Force was the best path to cosmonaut, so he joined a local aviation club. I started flying planes at 15. At 16, I was flying them on my own. I was flying over my hometown where I was born. Everything was so familiar and uh, pleasant to the eye, so then I realized that after two years of flying, when I was in high school, the choice was right. After high school, Shkaplerov went to the Kachinsk Air Force Pilot School in Volgograd and graduated as a pilot engineer. He flew MiG-29s while attending the Zhukovsky Air Force Engineering School, then spent six years as a pilot instructor while also flying as a member of the Sky Hussars, a flight demonstration squadron. Shkaplerov was selected as a cosmonaut in 2003. If we do not study the um, space, we will stalemate um, and we have to move on. We have to study new planets, um, new horizons, new resources, uh, new energy resources, for example. Maybe there is some other types and forms of life uh, on other planets, so why not? Anatoly Ivanishin, a lieutenant colonel in Russia's Air Force, is a native of Irkutsk, one of the largest cities in Siberia. He spent a lot of time in various sports and study groups as a boy. And although his mother says he always wanted to be a cosmonaut, Ivanishin remembers wanting to be a fighter pilot. And that's why he joined a skydiving club as a young teenager. At the time, it was the only uh, sky-related activity available for me. Uh, we, we didn't have at the time uh, an opportunity in my city to fly uh, any kind of airplanes. Uh, so I did my first uh, jump uh, when I was 14. He didn't get into military pilot school on his first attempt, so Ivanishin spent a year majoring in aviation design at the Irkutsk Polytechnic Institute 
before starting his pilot training at the Chernigov Higher Military Aviation School. He graduated in 1991, the same year the Soviet Union collapsed. And although he flew the MiG-29 and Su-27 operationally, he felt he wasn't getting the experience he wanted. So he took classes at Moscow State University in economics, statistics, and information theory. He graduated in 2003 with plans for a career as a software developer, but he gave that up when he was selected as a cosmonaut that very same week. Human beings are two curious creatures, and uh, they will not remain for a long time on low Earth orbit. Uh, they will go further and further to the universe, because to go further, we will need uh, new solutions, uh, new materials, new spacecrafts. And uh, the international space station we have today is the right place uh, uh, to prove uh, solutions.